Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am back today with another alternative using the April 2021 paper pumpkin kit. Today I'm going to be using the inside of the envelopes as pattern paper. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the past few days, I have shared with you some alternatives using the So Cool Paper Pumpkin Kit. I will pop pictures of those up on screen now, and if you want to see how I made either of those, make sure to check out the description box for links. Like I mentioned in the intro, today's card is going to be making use of the inside of the envelope and I'll be using it like pattern paper. Also from the kit, I will be using the stamp set and the Bermuda Bay ink. Now I did go ahead and grab a couple other things from my stash and get it ready. I will be making mini slimline cards today, so I went ahead and pre-made those card bases. I will be following the April 2021 sheet load of cards layout. If you want to download that, it's free for subscribers. I will link the video in the description box below. I also got out a couple of Gina K Designs inks that I thought would go well with the rest of the colors in the kit. I will be doing some water coloring with these just like in yesterday's video. When I bring in any other products or tools as I'm doing the voiceover and the process, I will make sure to let you know. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! The first thing I'm going to do today is cut apart my envelopes so I can get that pattern paper out of there. Now you could tear it, but I don't want to accidentally rip any of the pattern, so I will be using my trimmer to cut off the slightest bit from each edge of the envelope. That way, when I've sliced those two off, I can just open this up and then reveal all of the pattern inside. Once that is done, I'm going to cut this so the pattern bleeds or touches the edges on two sides. Now when I do this left side here of the envelope, I need to push it a little bit further over since the top of the envelope's pattern doesn't reach as far to the left. Once that's done, I'm going to flip it over and cut this to three inches tall and then I cut so the left side bleeds. Now there is a little part where the seal or the sticky part of the envelope is, so once again it has to go a little bit further to the left. And finally on this piece, I'm going to cut where the score line was for the envelope flap. There will be a little gap between these, but it will be covered up by the vertical strip on the sketch. I'm going to be cutting what's left of the envelope into one piece that is one and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. I did realize after I cut it down that when I put it together with the first two pieces, the direction of the pattern isn't going in the same way, but I actually think that's going to be okay. It is going to break it up a little bit and make it look like there is almost a second pattern. Just like in the sketch, I want a mat behind that vertical piece of pattern paper. So I brought in some scraps from yesterday's cards. This is Gina K Designs Plum Punch cardstock, and I cut it into two pieces that were one and three quarters inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. I cut the other scrap of cardstock in the same way as well as my envelope just like the first and then I had a couple last cuts to make and that is going to be for the sentiment strip on the sketch. Now originally it called for this piece to be three and a half inches wide. I did go a little bit wider. I went three and three quarters because I knew my sentiments, some of them were going to be a little bit too long for that width. Always make sure that you adjust the sheet load measurements and shapes to whatever fits your needs. 
after I had all of the cuts made, I wanted to get my images stamped and embossed. I brought in a couple pieces of Strathmore Bristol Smooth, since I will be watercoloring with those inks, and I also brought in my Versamark ink, my Detail Black embossing powder, and of course my embossing buddy. I was pleasantly surprised to see that both images would fit onto one scrap, so that second one will just go back into my little scrap box for Bristol. Since this is more expensive than the regular cardstock I use, I do try to hang on to almost all of the pieces. The stamps hadn't been used yet, so you'll notice there I ran my fingers over the top of those to remove some of the oils from manufacturing. Then I inked it up and stamped it twice with the Versamark. This is just to ensure, since there's the texture on the Bristol, that there's lots of ink on there to hold on to that embossing powder. Once I've done that twice, I pour the powder over it and then I heat set this off camera because I know that you guys have seen me do that lots of times. Now it's time to get those images watercolored. Today, because I will be using three inks, I did go ahead and bring in the painting palette that I just made on my own. It is a half a sheet of white cardstock laminated. I will be able to just wipe this clean later and reuse it over and over. I did have to pull in a brown ink. I forgot earlier about the stick on the popsicle, but this coloring is gonna be pretty much like what I did yesterday's for the background, except I am doing more than one color. I try to put some color where the shades is, clean off my brush, and then come in and spread the color in. Now, I did have that green a little bit too juicy at first with water, so I added a little more to my palette. I continued with the rest of the colors until it was done, and I bet I let this set and dry about 10 minutes before moving on. While I continue with the coloring, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or the question of the video. Now today's question, you'll already know my answer, but I would like to know, have you ever watercolored with your inks? Let me know in the comment section below, and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you've answered and want me to see it. I just love getting to know more about each of you and sharing a little bit more about myself through these questions. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to answer them. Once those images were dry, I brought in my pair of fine tip scissors and trimmed those out. Now that most of the pieces were ready, I could start to put the cards together. I adhered the pattern papers and the card stocks following the layout of the April 2021 sheet load of cards. But I can't quite put the images on yet because my sentiments aren't stamped. So I went ahead and I brought back in my Misty so that I could stamp one sentiment on each of the sentiment strips. I chose Hey You and You Are So Cool. I kind of knew ahead of time what the final layout would look like, so that's why I placed my sentiments like I did. Now, once I was done with that, my cat Aspen once again decided to make an appearance, so I stopped for a little bit to show her some love. I'm not sure what's up with her the last couple videos. She used to never show up, but I do kind of like it. With Aspen out of the way, I could then finish up the cards. I adhered the sentiment strips just straight down to the card base, and then I brought in some dimensionals from the paper pumpkin kit to pop up the popsicle and the watermelon slice on the card front. Now, before we can go, you know I need to add a little bit of bling, so I brought in some enamel dots that I had just on my work desk needing a home, and I placed three on each of the cards. On the first one, I just did a little line of three, and on the watermelon card, I did a little triangle of three. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I created today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.